This is TTM Plus TV Africa, where we'll bring you some of the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Osi Godwin, and to do this with me today, I've got my co uncle Ife Olua. Yes, Shinkaya. that's me. How are you doing? Your dad's me made me pronounce your name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're not what that about that. No, I'm sure they get it right all the time. Okay, cool. How are you doing? I'm all right. And you? Amazing as usual. Great. Okay, so um, I guess it's a bit of sad news this morning. Very sad. Yeah, Nigerian reggae music icon Majek Odumi Fasheki, popularly known as Majek Fashek, has died at the age of 57. He's best known for his 1988 massive single, Send Down the Rain. He blessed us with singles such as Little Patience, Redemption Song, Power of a Woman, African Unity, to mention a few. His longtime manager, Omenka Uzomadi, announced the death on his Instagram page. Good morning, everyone. Yes, I've been having pressure calls from all over. Yes, it is true that the legend has gone to meet with the Lord. But this time, I want to say we should all celebrate him, his achievement. He has done a lot for Nigeria, Africa. And um, whatever the family decides, we'll get to you. This is all I have to say for now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Joining us via Zoom to speak on the life of the icon is a man who, without mentioning his name, history of showbiz in Nigeria will not be complete, and a former music as executive, Dayo Olomo. Also joining us is a veteran in the Nigerian entertainment industry, Charles Novia. Hello, Charles. Hi, nice to be here. Thank you for having Good me. Good to have you as well. Um, so you you worked closely with Majek Fashek. What's how would you describe his life? Well, um, at the time I um, got to be with Majek, that was about two thousand and five to about two thousand and ten. Was for five years. Um, he was coming out of um, what he called he, he would call a wilderness. I was saying that was a wilderness. Sorry, I'm a little bit dramatic sometimes, but I can give you a little bit of skits of. How Majek used to talk, but it was the same as a spiritual thing. I'm, I'm coming from a wilderness, you know what I'm saying. Um, he had been on hiatus um, for a while, and so when we signed him on to November Record to release the album Little Patience, he was, uh, you know, ready at that point in time to sort of bring out the, the kind of songs, the new songs that he had, which he felt was for the, that generation, for the millennium, because you know it was just we're just into the early the 2000s then. Um, it was quite a great experience um, because Majek was somebody that I got to understand and know um, in that, within that period. He was quite um, a shy. He was shy. I mean, that, that's not that funny thing, but I think he was a little bit shy. He was quite a shy person, even though he could be a face and you could, you could see him and you think that he was, um, he was interacting with you. But he had a shy mien. But he also had a very deeply spiritual side. Um, he was very, very spiritual. He was, I mean, he could pray on the, with the Bible, pray, quote Psalms, do a whole lot of things. And then um, he also was prophetic, you know. And in all of those things, he was an enigma. He was a pleasant enigma. And you, you needed to understand him to really get to know him. But those eccentricities were positive to me. Um, having worked in the movie sector too, and seen a whole lot of that too as well, and some other musicians, it was positive. But I, I, I think it was quite like then from I'm great. All right. So good morning, Charles. So how do you think um, Majek's death would affect the Nigerian music industry, considering the fact that uh, we don't have a lot of people that have strong rooted music these days? So how do you think such a person's death would affect the Nigerian music industry? Well, I think, you know, I'm not, I mean, trying to do, draw comparisons. I think the Nigerian music industry has been quite well right now. Uh, I think if, if the, um, in the era of Majek and uh, the Raskimonos, the reggae era, what we call the reggae era, if they had the platforms that are available presently, would have actually, you know, really, really been very massive, more than it we were at that time. But I think what they have to learn and the void that has been, um, the void that we, ha we have right now would be the essence of lyricism, positive lyricism, message music. Majek's music was always positive. He was talking about the African consciousness, the need to be true to your roots as Africans. 
they need to have a spiritual connection with God. They need to, um, you know, um, fight societal ills. You know, those, but that was the era where they came and it preached to a whole generation of people, including me and including a, a, a lot of young people. And then he, we don't have much of that in our music. The present songs we have right now have less of what I call message music than what they used to have. I think in hopefully post COVID, a lot of people will reset their own mindset about what they want to preach in their songs. Okay. Magic. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Novia, thank you for your perspective on this. But let's let's hear what Mr. Ulomo um, would say about Majek Fashek. How, how would you describe his life? Uh, I think more than anything, Majek's life needs to be celebrated. Uh, and I'll tell you my relationship with Majek. I was there when Majek started. I was the in 1990. I was, the promo, I was the head of media relations and protocol of D.P. Lecky, the organizer of the biggest um, festival in Nigeria then. And we had the opportunity to contract Majek for, for a show at Lecky, at Lecky Beach. And it was my responsibility to go and pick Majek at home. In fact, surprisingly, he was living at Majekodumi Street around Ikeja that time. And his son was his son name is Majekodumi. And I, I see Majek as an enigma. Somebody who has come a long way. I was there when he released his first record. When he was with Justice. Justice Band, yes. Then before he signed on to Tabansu Record, I was there. Then when I remember in those days, anytime Majek is going on stage, it will rain. In 1990, during the, uh, there's this musical festival that was organized by Chief Onka Kalu. His name, Chief Onka Kalu, one of the biggest um, musical festival then. When Majek was to play, Majek, he came in around about five o'clock and it started raining. When he also went to America, his first show in Nigeria at um, Night Shift, I was, I was there when he was singing um, Without You. So I've been there. When he sang on with um, Sony Music, I was there. So I've been with Majek for about uh, maybe 10 years as a close friend and a brother. And my brother just said something about Majek. Majek is a very, very spiritual person. Majek is very, very deep. In, uh, in his religiosity, in his spirituality, maybe because he comes from an Aladura background. And that Aladura mm -hmm. background reflected uh, in his prayer, in his prayer life. So he's very, very heavy on Psalms. Um, it, was, it, it will pray. And anytime he's going on stage, he will put on, he will put on, um, um, he, will, he will be ringing the bell and he will say, it's an eleven. Repent for the kingdom of Jah is at hand. That's the way he goes on stage. It's very, very dramatic. He has messages. Every of Majek's song has messages. Send down the rain without you, uh, uh, Pangolo. And he's very, very, and he plays very good guitar. So he's go, he will go on stage, play the guitar. But, oh, and um, Mr. Uh, Novia. Also, also that yes. You and Mr. Novia have used um, one word in common, which is that he's an enigma. Um, but I would like to ask on behalf of a lot of youths out there who would know Majek as an icon of, of, an icon of some sort, um, what would you say we should pick out of his life? Because, of course, he had his ups, his downs. We saw it play out, and he still remains an icon. But what do we take out from his life? I think more than anything, uh, we should celebrate. We should look at Majek in his entire totality. We should celebrate the good he has brought to the music industry. When you look at his album, his artistic, um, how hard work he is, I think we should embrace that. And most importantly for musicians, we should begin to sing music that has got message. When you look at the generation of Majek, I happen to, to promote Rastimono's um, Under Pressure. 
When you look at those songs, when you look at Oris Wiliki, when you look at Evierna Ogoli, when you look at Blackie, they have a lot of songs, even um, Sonny Neji. So for a lot of musicians, it will be having a core message. Let's know what you stand for. And for all the others, it is just looking at when we get to a pattern peak in our life, we just need to be mindful of where we are going because my message more than anything will be it is not getting to the top that matters, but it is how you remain at the top. I think that would be my message. All right. So, um, Mr. Charles, so on your end, personally, what would you be doing to protect his legacy and make sure the fire keeps burning? Well, um, when, I, when he was on the record label, he gave me the rights to a biopic on him, um, to shoot a film on him, a bio, a bio movie. And we have started all the planning. I've written the script, which he approved, and I've gone to America, um, talked to a couple of um, guys in Hollywood that we were about to shoot. So I had cast Francis Duro back then, in 2006, to play my Jack. And because um, Francis had that... that uh, the, the height and a little bit of the look, so he was losing weight and learning the guitar. But somewhere along the line, we couldn't trace the kind of funds needed for that because mm. it, it was supposed to be an international biopic to be shot on 35 mm then back then. But it's something that I think um, for in, for the generation that we have right now, the generation mm. that knew him, that I think is a project that I think I want to carry on and do, and I'm going to re react. And what would the title right be? Say it again, please. What would the title be of the bi biopic? Well, it was called The Rainmaker, The Magic Fashek Story. That was all it called. That's, that's still the title. Rainmaker, The Magic Fashek Story. Mm -hmm. uh, because he told me a whole lot of things. And, well, I think he was scared a little bit at one time. He was scared that, you know... Uh, so there was something very uncanny, he said. So he was scared when we were about to... He called me one day and said, you know this biopic you're going to do? Forget it. Shoot it when I'm dead. Mm. And I said, no, come on, I'm not going to shoot it. That. People need to know when you are, see you. And I said, no, shoot it when I'm dead. And I just remember that this morning when I, when I heard the news and I'm like, you know, um, then it, it, this guy is, uh, it was, like I said, spiritual. He was a prophetic kind of person. And so now I'm thinking, okay, fine, you know, let's see how we can get work done on that. As a Nigeria in the diaspora, the, the most important thing I owe the world in terms of magic is to look at the total history, the story of Majek. Because if we are not very, very careful, people will be looking at Majek in the last five to 10 years or 15 years. But if we look at Majek, where is coming from? What lesson can we learn from Majek? And when they are doing the Majek narrative, we should be looking at everything. So just it's, it's about correcting it. For example, um, I'm a motivational speaker in the UK. I'm well known in the UK. But most people don't even know my story. In, uh, of my story in the Nigerian music industry. Um, out in the 80s and 90s. So now I am in a place that I can say, no, don't look at magic from that. Three people have called me this morning before I got a call from K when I was um, out jogging. And they said, oh, magic. Um, they were talking about magic of the current magic and i said no 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 no. look at magic from his days at justice um from his days at tabansi then look at when he went to america when he came back his contribution to the nigerian music industry when you look at magic's reggae you discover that his reggae is different from raskimono's reggae is different from oris Wiliki's reggae I, 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 in fact, I put him in the, in the realm of Lucky Dube. When you look at Lucky Dube's reggae in those days, it's different from, it's different from Bob Marley's reggae. His, his reggae is very, very rooted in his South African Zulu culture. Whereas uh, Majek's reggae is very, very rooted in his religious beliefs, in his Christian beliefs, and in his Bini roots. All mm. oh, right, thank you very much. Let, let's talk about, um, before we go, this would be to Charles as well. Let's talk about the ability of our icons to actually evolve into being able to make um, uh, money from their craft and their evergreen music digitally. What do you think is playing out in that space? Well, you're talking about royalties, but if I, I liken that to Majek, Majek um, still, was still getting royalties from some of his songs because some of those songs that were released and published on the Interscope and Sony Music, and you know, I mean, you're still getting royalties, um, which is which was mean, which means there was a structure internationally for him, 
Um, what we need to evolve here is the same template. Um, we need to have a collective societies more empowered, more transparent, so that artists, uh, you know, can get the, the, the residual value of what they've, they've, they've created over the years. Um, and these things come in handy when you are getting to your old age. And that's what most people don't understand. But mercifully, and uh, you know, it, we've seen many of the artists that have been signed on the scene, uh, an inflow of Sony music, Universal music, Warner Brothers music, coming in, signing Bonner Boys, Davido, and uh, the, the Bonner Boys, Davidos, and the mm -hmm. Whiskey. And that is that means there's a, there's a structure which, which those labels or those companies are going to put in place, which we will have to follow, which we will have to learn on the local scene. So I think artists have to learn, do not live for the day, but plan for the rainy day through your works. Mm. You know, your works are very important. Do not, do not dismiss the value of what you think you have and plan for the rainy day. All right. Thank you thank so you. much, Mr. Novi and Mr. Olomu, for celebrating the life of a magic fast track with us. Thank you. Oh. Okay, I mean, it was, of course, a rude shock this morning. Mm, very. Send down the rain, little patience. Those were songs I listened to growing up. And yeah, I was going to ask them their favorite Magic Fishek songs, yeah. though, but we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. But personally, what's your favorite Magic Fishek song? It has to be Little Patience. I think so, yeah. too. That mm -hmm. has to be mine, too. Um, but uh, the thing about Magic, I'm actually looking forward to that biopic because a lot Definitely. of people do not know a lot about his life and what is being true and all of that so we'd like to see all of that play out and let's see how it goes all right. may so rest in perfect peace amen it's time for a very quick break but when we come back we'll have one more to discuss welcome to tea time on plus tv africa where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and of course analyze them for you you can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> Most times I worry more about where I'm coming from mm. and where I am now. Wow. And that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Baba? Oh, <laughs> plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. Still make music and people are still buying. Sometimes I they look myself minimal. Are you? music is for mature-minded people. That got DM sometimes from Malawi. Like, sleeping early, sleeping early. President Muhammad Buhari has approved the immediate relaxation of the restriction placed on worship centers. This was made known at the Daily Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 briefing on Monday. And reacting to the news, media personality Dotson is asking questions. He said, and I quote, churches and mocks are open, schools are still closed. I am aware that God is everywhere, which is more important. Mm. In as much as people want to um, place emphasis on education and all that, but if you're lifting bans on schools, where would the ban be lifted? Are we talking about the universities? Are we talking what level are we talking about? Because um, I believe in churches and mosques, um, there's a level of maturity and order. They will go with the NCDC guidelines. But if we open schools for little children that do not even understand what coronavirus means they will go around running in the playground touching each other touching their faces putting their faces on each other so i think that would lead to more spread of the disease i'm not saying that mosque that that would not be having been in a crowded environment won't be but i think that it could be controlled compared to school so what level are we talking about if we want the schools to be open in as much as the schools are important i'm not in support of either of them being open Anyway, I, I know that um, even if you keep your child at home and then at the end of the day they go to church, if they have to play in church, they will still play in church and get the virus. As a parent, I, I wouldn't I, I, take my child to church this period and go and put him so in the play So the church is open or, for only adults well, at the uh, moment. That's, that's just what I'm saying. I'm not even in support of any of them. I, don't I, I, them I, I think Places that we need to start... Um, understanding the mechanism or whatever we want to put in place to make sure that um, we practice social distancing and probably live with the new normal, which some people are saying is live, understanding that COVID-19 is probably not going to go away anytime mm. soon, right? But, I think a lot of people have even forgotten this. <laughs> but I, I also want to say that 
the clamor that we saw in a lot of people with the, the eagerness of wanting to go back to church and the mm -hmm. house of worship to worship God. It is not bad. I love that we love uh, God. God and religion. But if it's a very tiny little percent of that clamor has been directed or ever been directed to our education system, mm -hmm. I think we would have been better right now. So may, I'm, I'm just going to use this as an avenue to tell anyone watching to say, we need to get our priorities right. Trust me, parents are not coming and, for school yeah, right now because they don't want to pay school fees. It's not even just about <laughs> school fees. It's about your, your child's future. It's about the future of someone you have brought to the, this earth. We are already saying that the education system is not as good as it's supposed to. So mm. if you had this um, power to lend your voice to say, can we make this better? I mean, you should. Instead of just focusing mm. on the fact that you have not gone to church every Sunday of how many um, uh, months just because you want to go and worship God. It is good, it's amazing, but I'm saying let's channel this level of energy somewhere else as well. That's where I'm looking at it from. I, I don't even know how I want to feel about lockdown being relaxed or the number now getting to 10,000 plus and still going higher. Yesterday was 400 plus mm -hmm. recorded. So it is scary. But and we that's have to because move everything has been day. open finally. The, the increase will come, but I think people are not even adhering to the guidelines mm -hmm. being stated already. Nobody, I don't even see people wearing their face mask like that anymore. Like everything has gone back like coronavirus is now the new normal, yeah. but it shouldn't be. Okay, um, that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching and do join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or Twitter Tosa Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, A Plus TV Africa. My thank you, as always, go to my amazing co anchor, Ife Uluwa Oshoke. Yes, that's me. And the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Please do stay safe.